I believe we all live twice. My name is Vivian McKinnon, and as my introduction said, I am the owner and founder of HydroEase, Northern Ireland's only dedicated flotation centre. And before I tell you anything about me at all, I'd like to tell you that I believe I deserve my place up here. I believe that I am good enough. I believe that every single thing I have in my life, I have worked hard to achieve. And it's all because of hard work and self-belief. So then I started thinking, oh, there we go. So then I started thinking about self-belief. And I was thinking, you know, self-belief is, to me, what we think about ourselves, what we believe about ourselves. And I sat and had a really good think about it. And then I thought, do you know what, I'll Google it. Because everybody goes to Google when they're not really very sure. And I looked up the Collins Dictionary. And it said, confidence in one's own ability and judgment. And I thought, hmm, that's quite interesting. I'll Google it to another dictionary. The other dictionary said, to trust in your own abilities. And I thought, trust and confidence, these are two great big words. These are massive words. But what if you don't have either of them at all? Is this really all self-belief is about? And if it's not, then how do we transform our self-belief to get the life we desire? Let me take you back to 1972. This is a picture of me and my mum. About six to eight weeks after this picture was taken, I fell face first down a flight of concrete stairs in a baby walker. My mum at the time was struggling with mental health and was struggling with alcohol. By age eight, I'd experienced pretty much every abuse that you could imagine, not directly at the hands of my mum and dad, but through being left in vulnerable situations. At age eight, I made a fantastic relationship with alcohol. And alcohol said, come with me, I'll give you confidence, I'll stop all that stuff. And it was great. At 13, I had a relationship with cannabis and it done pretty much the same. So together we had this lovely, wonderful relationship that enabled me to avoid the pain of the past. By age 20, I was homeless and living on the streets with a one-year-old, fleeing a domestic violence relationship. And then my drug use really escalated. And I started having conversations and relationships with cocaine, with promiscuity, with... And my self-belief then was, I deserve this. My self-belief then was, I'm not good enough. My self-belief was, I am unlovable. I am vulnerable. And every single person in this world is dangerous. The world for me is a dangerous place. So how's that for self-belief? Because it's still the same thing. It's still the same thing I was talking about at the beginning, about deserving to be standing up here, about believing in myself, about believing that I am good enough. So self-belief is what we believe about ourselves. I firmly believe. So, standing here, as the owner of Hydrace, Northern Ireland's only dedicated flotation centre. That, I, that I'll just never stop saying, never get fed up saying. Got a right, and for any of you that don't know flotation, what I'd like you to do, for anybody that lives with physical pain, so that might be sports injuries, might be fibromyalgia, might be a broken bone. Or if you live with mental pain, for example, trauma, anxiety, um, uh, overwhelm, stress, imagine a place free from gravity. Imagine a place free from all external stimulation where the only thing you can hear is your own heartbeat. 25 centimetres of body temperature water and half a tonne of Epsom salt and you just float. And you simply disconnect from everything round about you apart from yourself. And when you make that connection back to yourself, self-belief just naturally follows on. The self-empowerment of being connected to absolutely nothing, being free from gravity, allowing all your senses to just rest. So my, my journey from the self-belief I used to have to the self-belief I have now has seen me studying in many modalities. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. I'm a cognitive behavioural therapist. I'm a master practitioner in neurolinguistic programming, timeline therapy and hypnosis. I'm a havening practitioner. I'm a spectrum coach. I'm an auricular acupuncturist. I work for the Trust and I deliver mental health first aid. I'm on a board for a charity. So many different things. And one of the biggest models that I studied and looked at was this. And it was exploring where our beliefs originate. And Seamus touched on it earlier. So we have, whether you believe in past lives or not, I've put that up there because some people do. 
So past lives or genealogy, we have come from the, so when we come from the womb, everyone thinks, oh, what a lovely wee baby, with such a clear mind and such, so, so untouched and innocent. There is massive research now into epigenetics and how to, we can pass things on through generations, through transgenerational traumas, through adverse childhood experiences. So the past, the now and the future. Maurice Massey in the 1980s developed this, this model. And what he looked at was between zero and seven is our imprint stage. We don't have the cognitive capacity to challenge things. We take blind belief. So if someone tells us we're stupid, we're stupid. If someone tells us that we're unlovable, we're unlovable. If someone acts in a way that enables us to think that, because the world's about us. If you said to a three-year-old, four-year-old, do you want to see the fairies in the garden? Their eyes would widen and they would go, oh, fairies, there's a fairies in the garden, and they would come with you. If you said to an eight, nine-year-old, do you want to see the fairies in the garden? They would be like, fairies in the garden? Are you sure? There'd be a bit of them that would be, and for anybody that still believes in Santa, I'm sorry, because I've just blew it for you there and then. <laughs> So this is where we start, 7 to 14 is our modelling stage. This is where we start to challenge things and we go, hang on a minute. So I'm separate from my mum and dad. So I am, right, and I'm out here in the world on my own and I'm going to school and I'm doing all these things. And we start to look at the people around about us. And people, this is the stage where people will say, Jesus, you're your mother's double. Or they'll say, oh, you're just like your dad, your mannerisms of your dad. Or you'll go up the stairs looking cute as you like and coming back down the stairs looking br like Britney Spears. So it's where we start to take things from people around about us. 14 to 21 is our socialisation stage, and this is where we take all of that together, throw some puberty in, and God only knows what could happen. So what happens in terms of what we believe about ourselves? This is a model that looks at values and beliefs. So when we have an event, the first event, that enables us to feel in a certain way, we have other events behind that that, that then back that up. We then have another significant event. We have another event in terms of that emotion. So say, for example, it's happiness. We're six months old, someone walks past our buggy, lifts up a teddy bear and says, boo. And we giggle and laugh and our mind produces these chemicals, our body moves in a certain way. And our mind goes, ah, this is happiness, this is joy. We have other events that make us happy and joyful. We then, at seven or eight years old, are walking along the promenade, holding hands with our granddad and we're feeling connected and we're going for an ice cream and everything's going great and someone slips on a banana skin and you laugh and you laugh and you laugh and you and your granddad have this great laugh and you tell everyone about it. You then have another significant event where you maybe have a real laugh with your sister around something to do with Maltesers, personal story that I'm not gonna go into. Um, other significant events that make you laugh, you then, you're, you leave university, you go out with your friends, you go to see Lee Evans, you all get absolutely hammered. And 20 years later, you're like, do you remember that time we went? And your friend goes, don't even say it. Remember, we went to see Lee Evans and you fell on the tree because you were really drunk. And remember that? You see your granddad and he says, do you remember the time I took you for an ice cream? And you're like, oh, I had that hideous dress on. You can remember every detail, every single detail, because it's a significant emotional event. What I've explained there is joy and happiness. This happens with anger, with sadness, with fear, with guilt, with hurt. And these are parts of our belief systems as well. So in all of that, when you start to believe, the magic is within you. You can power your own personal transformation. So in Hydroease, as well as the Flotation Centre, I also have a, a programme called Draft, which is recovery, reconnection and flotation therapy on a one-to-one. -one. As a group work, it's for, it stands for um, reveal, accept, forgive and transform. Part of reveal, we look at the three C's which helps to transform your self-belief, in my humble opinion. So the first one is challenge. Challenge every single thing you think you know about yourself. Every single thing. Take it right to the very end, listen to what your unconscious mind has to say, and then challenge it. Imagine you have a set of scales in your head and try and get that balance. Change. Change your language. See when people tell me that they suffer from, and I'm like, I suffer from migraines, I suffer from IBS, I suffer from fibromyalgia. No, you live with it. Because when you start to live with it, it starts to disappear. It starts to not become an issue anymore. And that self-belief starts to change. Use but effectively. But cancels out what you've just said. That's a lovely drop. But it'd be nice if it was red. You'll instantly go, what would, that, what would that look like if it was red? Because but cancels out. But if your self-belief is, I am unlovable, but there are people who out there who appreciate me. 
you cancel out the whole I am unlovable. So use but effectively. And the last one is create. And again, going back to what Seamus was sitting talking, I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Visualize, imagine, and claim. If you can create it here, this is the most powerful nation in the world, the imagination. And if you can create something in here, you can make it happen out here. Guaranteed, every time. What if? Now there's two words. What if? So if your belief is, I am, I am, I am stupid, but what if I was a bit smarter? Your unconscious mind hears what if, and it's like, oh, well, if you're a bit smarter, you'd be doing this, you'd be doing that. It'll give you options and opportunities. Food for the unconscious mind will change your beliefs. I said at the very beginning that I believe everybody has the opportunity to live twice. But it's the people who understand that the first life is the only one you have that get the opportunity to live the second one. Thank you for listening.